Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. There was excitement in Ranger headquarters. I was watching the teletype as it skipped across the yellow paper, printing its message. The other rangers were grouped around me and peering over my shoulder. I could tell the fellas had a somber look on their faces as they watched the message unfold in type. This was the beginning of the story, Ice Pack. Hey, there's a ship stuck in the ice off the coast of Alaska. The sea chaser, huh? Not doing much chasing right now. Wow, look at that. The ship is loaded with government scientific apparatus and scientists. Yes, sirree. And the ice is sealing up tight around it. (laughs) How would you like to be in an ice prison, huh? I not like that. Too dangerous. I'll say it's dangerous, Grey Wolf. The ice could crush that ship. Even steel girders and plates can't resist the heavy pressure of thousands of tons of ice. And it says there are 30 passengers and 15 crewmen on board that ship. Boy, those fellows are in a spot. Well, that's the end of the message. I'll say one thing about that situation. Uh, What's that, Bill? I wouldn't want to be in those fellows' shoes for all the tea in China. Officers and those in charge for the expedition meet in the captain's cabin in five minutes. That is all. Who has the watch on the bridge, Mr. Colson? The second officer, Mr. Hannibal, Captain. Uh, go to the bridge and tell Mr. Hannibal that the captain requests his presence for the rest of the senior officers. Also, uh, tell Mr. Gilquist it's the captain's orders that he temporarily relieve Mr. Hannibal on the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. I hope this isn't the last staff meeting I'll have on my ship. Gentlemen, the captain. That is, find yourself a place around the table. bad is the situation, Captain Manders? Well, Dr. Nichols, it's pretty bad. I've just rechecked my calculations. We're drifting slowly into the middle of this ice pack. To the south, sir? No, Mr. Hannibal, to the north, I regret to say. And uh, what is the significance of that, Captain? Well, by drifting to the north, Doctor, we'll meet another ice pack and join it. As near as I can make out, this adjacent pack is about ten miles square. If we join that and another joins that in turn, well, you understand what I mean. We're locked in. That's a fine mess, isn't it? Yes. For all practical purposes, gentlemen, this hull of steel would crumble like a matchbox under the tremendous pressure. Also, being carried farther north as we are, that means the ice will freeze more solidly instead of being loosely joined together. Even if the ship held together, we could drift all winter locked in this ice. But... Our food and fuel will hold for only 60 days on full rations, 120 on half rations. Mm, An important factor, Mr. Hannibal. Captain, what is your plan of action? At the present moment, only to wait. We're radioing constantly for help, but the atmospheric conditions up here are bad for radio transmission. Yes, and we're in the part of the world where everything works opposite to what it should. Gentlemen, let's face it. We're in a spot, a terrible spot. Frankly, it's a a moot question as to whether we'll ever get out of it alive. Oh, same story, Mr. Hannibal, no contact. Magnetic fields have isolated us like iron curtains. 
I got through with one call for help, then no more. Still, the Navy did answer, Captain, which is something to be thankful for. Yes, at least they know we're up here. But as to giving them our position and help them find us, what can we do? They can't roam all over the North Pacific looking for us. Perhaps they can track us with radar, sir. Even if they did, these ice packs are so many and so vast, they wouldn't know where we are. I guess you're right, Captain. It's pretty hopeless. Um, how are the men taking it and the other officers? Well, First Officer Stewart is ill with the grip, sir. Yes, I looked on them this morning. What a time for our first officer to be stricken. And the others? The rest of the crew are in fair shape. Getting a little jittery, however. I think they'll be all right as long as they've got plenty to eat. Well, I'm afraid that won't be for long, Mr. Hannibal. Monday we'll be forced to cut rations in half. We've been out here a week now and no sign of help coming. We've got to do something. But, sir, we have enough food to last us 60 days. Surely we'll be rescued by then. And you say surely. What makes you so sure, Mr. Hannibal? Let's be realistic now. What if the ship splits wide open from the pressure and we have to abandon the ship? What about food then? I never really thought of that. Rather, I've known it could happen but chose to ignore it. What would we do then, sir? If the ship breaks open, we'll have to strike out over the ice in small parties. Each party would be responsible for its own food and supplies. Some of the food will get lost, of course, bound to in such hazardous expeditions. No, Mr. Hannibal, we have to begin half rations. Perhaps the sooner the better. They won't like it, sir. It'll make them, well, sensitive. I'm sure if they're told why we're doing it, they'll understand. Better inform them immediately. And if it makes them sensitive, as you say, it's something to be thankful for. They won't be nearly so sensitive when they're dead. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Bill, this is Colonel Anders. Oh, how are you, sir? Nice to hear your voice. It's good to talk to you, too, Bill. Uh, now, listen carefully. Yes, sir? Uh, by now, you've seen the report of that ship marooned in the ice, haven't you? Oh, uh, yes, we have. We saw it come in on the teletype. Been checking each day. Uh, Bill, that ship means a job for you. Oh, yes, sir? Uh, there's a plane waiting for you at the Air Force Base at Collie City. It's going to take you and the boys to a destination in the southern part of Alaska near the coast. From there, you'll be picked up by dis the, the destroyer Peabody. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, but uh, this comes as a, as a surprise. Well, I guessed it would, Bill. Uh, these orders come from Washington. And with you take Stumpy, Gray Wolf, and Henry. Have you got it? Yes, sir. Fine. Now, uh, better get packed and on your way. Right away. I'll be thinking of you and praying. Oh, and Bill, there's one more thing. And what's that, sir? Find that ship. All the gear on board the plane, fellas? Yeah, Bill. How about the dogs and, and the sleds and the weather equipment? Well, we'll get that in Alaska, Henry. All set to get aboard? The pilot's waiting for us. Ah, we get on board now. Eight before beauty there, young feller. Time up. Give me your hand, Henry, and I'll ice you up. Okay, Stumpy. Here I come. I'm in. I am, too. Okay, now fasten yourselves down. As soon as I close the hatch, we'll take off. Here we come, Alaska, and all points north. Captain Manders, excuse me, but this waiting is getting on our nerves... Are you doing something to get help? Uh, your impatience is understandable, Dr. Nichols. But don't expect miracles. We've only been able to get through the magnetic field three times with a distress signal. But at least the outside world knows we're still alive. Captain, 
My men and I want to leave this ship and strike out on our own. Perhaps we can reach land and then send back help. Don't be fools. You wouldn't last five hours out on those packs. With all their traps and crevices and death holes. You seem to forget, Captain. I'm an experienced explorer in ice fields. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you? I question that, Doctor. The ice fields you've explored have been solid, hundreds of feet thick. What do you know about these packs and all their sudden treachery? I know what's happened to men who've tried to outsmart these packs. More than one expedition has been lost that I myself put over the side. And I refuse to do it again. But we've been here three weeks now, sir. And nothing's been done except radio for help. I'm going to leave this ship with my men and take a far better chance. Dr. Nichols, you're forgetting one thing. You're talking to the captain of this ship. I'm the one who gives the orders. I'm responsible for every soul on this vessel. And I say nobody's going to set a foot on that ice unless this ship begins to split apart, understand? Yes, Captain. I understand. I'm aware that you're responsible for this ship, its crew, its passengers, and its cargo. However, well, then, I think... Well, then, please, let me continue to carry that responsibility as I see fit. Now, if we use our heads and work together, we may get out of this alive. But, if it's each man for himself, every last one of us will perish. <laughs> Commander Cole at your service, Rangers. Uh, glad to meet you, Commander. Hello, Mr. Jefferson. Welcome aboard the destroyer Peabody. Uh, we'll save the other introductions for later, if you don't mind. Must get underway in a few minutes. But uh, we haven't brought the sled dogs and their gear aboard yet, Commander. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You won't be able to use sleds and dogs where the ship is marooned. Oh? You mean the packs are not solid enough? Well, that's my understanding. Packs are certainly drifting north, judging by the location of the three radio signals we've had. Perhaps the ice will be one solid mass by the time we get there. So we must get to them as soon as possible. That's right. There's not an hour to lose. I'll have someone see that the dogs are taken back, and then we'll get underway. Bill, what does this mean? The condition of the ice packs, that is. It means just one thing, Henry. The ice packs are full of death traps. Soft spots, cracks, break-off chunks that give way with a man's weight. If a man fell into that water, he wouldn't last two minutes. Any more signals from the sea chaser, Commander? No, Bill, not one. How far away are the ice packs? Oh, we should be getting into a general area very soon. We've been doing 30 knots all night and most of the day. Yes, I judge it was full speed ahead from the vibration. Hmm. Mr. Matz wishes to speak to you, Commander. Very well. Excuse me, Bill. Uh, certainly. Commander Cole. Yes, Matz. I'll be right there. Good news, Commander? I don't know, Bill. Let's go down to the radar room. They've picked up an object. Looks like a ship. Brewing in the cruise quarter. What kind of trouble, Mr. Hannibal? Mutiny. Mutiny? By whom? All of them. Both the crew and the men of the expedition, sir. Oh, are they going out of their minds? What's being done about it? Well, Dr. Nicholas has been trying to calm them down, but I'm afraid for his safety, sir. They're going crazy with fear. All right. We'll go right down there. Here's a revolver. Shoot the first man in the leg that tries to start a fight. Oh. That's an order. Quiet yeah, down, now. Don't jump in the ocean with your orders. We want to get off this ship alive. I tried to control them, Captain, but they are scared out of their wits. Find out. Somebody started the rumor the ship was sprung a leak. Well, that's nonsense. There's no leak. Now, you men, quiet down and come to attention or else. Or else what? We're taking over this ship and you're not going to stop us. No, I'm not, eh? Make ready with your revolver, Mr. Hannibal. I'll count to three. And if you don't quiet down, we'll open fire. One. It's not going to work, sir. We'll have to fire. Two. You're not going to shoot them, are you, Captain? No. See those mattresses along the bulkhead, Mr. Hannibal? Yes, sir. We'll fire into them? Yes. If they don't stop when I count three, I'll scare them, but it won't hurt anybody. Ready? Ready. Three. 
Bye. I hope you men realize I mean what I say. Now that you've decided to stop acting like a bunch of wild animals, we'll talk sense. Mr. Hannibal, take one of those sailors right in front of you and go down to the bilge. Check the ship for leaks and report your findings to me at once. Captain, the ship is sound. There isn't a leak nor a split in her seams. Now, you, sailor, is this true or not? Not a leak in the whole ship, Captain. Very well. Does that satisfy you, men? I want to say this. Whoever started this evil rumor ought to be put in irons for inciting a mutiny. Now, let's be reasonable. We've still got a goodly supply of food and water and fuel. Help will soon come. Believe me that it will. Lose faith and you haven't got a thing left. Well, let's forget this ever happened and go back to your station. All right, now. come on, man. Let's go back here. Yeah, right. Boy, age ten years facing that mob. Uh, I know what you mean, Doctor. The sea and ice does strange things to men. This ship, it's, it's getting to be a prison for them. Any suggestions how to keep their minds off of this until help comes, Captain? Yes, Mr. Hannibal. Keep them working. If they have to scrub the decks with a toothbrush, but keep them busy. I'm sure that's an ice pack we picked up on the radar, Bill. Well, it's certainly not the ship, although it must be somewhere in this area. Wouldn't you say so, Commander? Yes, I would say so, Bill. I... Our present position agrees with the general area of the distress signals that were picked up. Mm -hmm. well, how can you put us onto the ice packs so we can set out to look for the sea chaser? Oh, we can do that all right. Uh, this destroyer has a bow that can be used for ramming. We'll wedge into the ice off of an ice pack and put you over the side with your men. Well, that's fine, but uh, won't you get stuck, too? No, since we're on the rim of the pack. If I see a trap setting, I'll blast it wide open with depth charges. Oh, mm -hmm. sounds good. Uh, when do we start? Uh, in about uh, two hours, we'll lower you over the bow. That boom and ice gives me the creeps. Yeah, you've got everything you need, Bill. Oh, yes, Commander. Including a good supply of shells for our very pistols. Okay, now, uh, you know the signals we've set up. Mm -hmm. We'll sound siren blast every ten minutes until you get back. Rope ladder's ready, Bill. Uh, good, Henry. All right, over the side, then. Uh, I go first. Goodbye, sir. So long, Grey Wolf. Now, listen, men. Whatever you do, be sure to watch where you're going. Thanks for your concern, Commander. We'll be back, and God willing, all hands from the sea chaser with us. <laughs> Don't mind me if I shiver a bit. I'm really not cold, but it's just that this boom and ice pack reminds me of a hungry monster devouring ships and men. Yep. And it can do it, too, Sonny. Now watch your step now, young fella, and keep those goggles on. And okay. look before each step. Slow going, huh, Bill? Yes, it is. But it's necessary. Hey, fellas, grab me! <laughs> He's slipping! <laughs> uh, I got him. It's okay, Henry. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't scare an old man like that. If you'd have slipped into that crack, you'd have lost a good leg, young feller. You're telling me. Boy, am I glad you were right behind me, Grey Wolf. Uh, I'm glad, too. Henry Scott, I ought to send you right back to the oh, destroyer. Please, Bill. I I'll be more careful. Honest. All right, but watch yourself. Now, as we go along, we'll drive these small markers into the ice. They'll help us find our way back. The warship will sound its siren every ten minutes to help give us direction. Bill, I just thought of something. Hmm? If the ship is stuck in this pack, why don't they blow their horn? Well, I don't know, Henry. Maybe if we wait long enough, they will. Anyway, how are we going to know which way we're going? I've got a gyro compass, pal. That's how. Come on, let's push on ahead. we got to keep going until we find that trapped ship. I 
sound like that booming ice, Mr. Hannibal. It means pressure's building up from the outside of the ice pack. I don't like it either, sir. It could spell the destruction of the ship, sir. All we have to have happen is to have the ice bash in a bulkhead, and we'll have to clear out and take to the ice. The Lord help us then. Yes, only God will be able to help us then. Don't you think we ought to blow the ship's horn more often, sir? Mr. Hannibal, let me congratulate you. That's the first real sign of faith you've shown that help would come. Bill, how long have we been out here? Oh, about four hours, pal. Oh, it seems like all day. Hey, stop, man. Listen. I didn't hear anything. Did you, Bill? I'm not sure, Henry. Don't you ever wash your ears? I heard a ship's horn coming from straight ahead. That should be about the middle of the ice pack, I take it. <laughs> You're imagining things, old-timer. I don't think so. I think I hear a ship's horn. I thought I heard something, too. Trouble is, it's to the windward. Let's push on, see if we find where a sound come from. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, I hear it this time. You guys are right, that is a ship's horn. That's a long way off, though. Well, let's get a move on, then. We won't get there standing still. Starboard bulkhead has a piece of ice sticking through it, and that's the truth. Oh, right, let's get off this time before we sink with it. Yeah, come the, on, man, let's go over the yeah, side. But the captain, he won't let us go, and he's got the artillery. Ah, come on. He can only wing a couple of us. The rest of us will get away. You want to die in a ship like rats, or do you want to live? Let's live, guys. Let's live. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Get our gear together and go over the side, captain or no captain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. captain and second mate better not try to stop us. piece of ice is in there solid, gentlemen. And the surrounding area of the hull hasn't started to crack yet. That ring's true. We can brace the watertight door to this compartment and we'll be safe for a while. Yes, as long as a large piece of ice doesn't shear us open amidships and pour in tons of water with it. Oh, you know, gentlemen, I'm afraid I'm going to have to admit that it looks rather black. The ship's beginning to break up and help hasn't come yet. What does that mean, Captain? It means that in two days we'll have to have to take to the ice. But why, Captain? We've still got about 60 days of food left, half rations, and about that much fuel. And you forget one thing, Mr. Hannibal. If this tremendous pressure increases and the ship is crushed, we stand the danger of an explosion from the boilers. I don't want to be anywhere near when that happens. And neither do you. Yes, of course. Well, guess we might as well start getting ready. Sounds like the crew's on the rampage again. The news of the stove in bulkhead must have got to them. Oh, gentlemen, check your revolvers carefully. We may have to wound a few men to save the lives of the rest. Come on, let's get up there and stop this wholesale march to death. Boy, have I ever glad to see that ship. That's a sight for sore eyes. Oh. You said it. Oh, I'm glad, too. I'll take a look through my glasses, see if I can find any signs of life. Hey, that sounds like pistol shot come from ship. Yeah, sure. Maybe there's trouble on board. Them fellas are maybe going crazy with waiting. And not that I blame them. What are we going to do, Bill? Get your very pistols loaded with green cartridges. And fire them over the ship when I say the word. If there's trouble... That should distract them and break up the party. I only hope they see us before somebody gets killed. I'm sorry, someone's been shot. The next man that tries to go over the side will get the same thing. I mean businessmen. I'm trying to save your lives. If we go over the side, we'll do so in organized parties, not like wild animals. Hmm. Why, 
You don't even have enough food with you, and most of you don't have the clothes to stand the weather out there. We don't worry about that. That's right. All we want to do is get off this tub before it's bashed in. Uh, right, they're out of their minds with fear, Captain. Yes, and there's a couple of ringleaders that keep the ball rolling. Watch it now. They're going to try to rush us. They like to come up the ladder one at a time. Be careful you don't wound them critically, but make every shot count. I think they'll stop after one or two of them get hit. Come on, you guys. Let's storm the quarter deck. The captain doesn't have the nerve to shoot us down like dogs. Here, here they come, sir. They mean business. And so do I. I'll fire when I get away. And shoot straight. We can't possibly fist fight that mob. Make every shot count. A bullet wound will be a small price for them to pay for saving their lives. The first one's coming up the ladder. Ready when I give the word now. What's that? Someone in the crew have a gun? Look overhead, sir. Mary shells bursting above us. Look. Man, we've been rescued! Well, that was quite an ordeal you went through, Captain Manders. Yes, Mr. Jefferson, it was. It would have been a more tragic one if you and your rangers hadn't shown up just when you did. We never could have held off those 35 desperate men. Especially when you're not particularly anxious to hurt them. I know what you mean. I take it you don't want to press mutiny charges, Captain Manders. No, Commander Cole, not under those circumstances. The sea in the eyes can turn men's minds to jelly sometimes. Mm. Now tell me, Bill, how come you fellas made it over the ice safely? Captain Manders tells me it was extremely treacherous. Well, we had some close calls, all right. Uh, Henry here particularly. But we just took it easy and were very careful. Then we marked a trail, of course, so we'd come back the same way we went. Captain, the crew and the men of the expedition wish to express their gratitude to you for saving their lives. They wish me to say that they're ashamed of their conduct. Oh, well, tell them to forget it. I have. As for the other, well, it seems to me the Rangers and the Navy did all the life saving. But thanks go to them. Well, boys and girls, the situation was pretty tense there for a while, wasn't it? But it merely emphasizes a uh, principle of action. Never lose your head or you may lose your life. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! <laughs> Hi, fellas and gals. Ranger Bill again, stepping in here for less than a minute to invite all of you out there to another half hour of adventure next week at this special spot on your radio dial. We've gathered a pile of stories for you with mystery and adventure and all kinds of excitement, and we don't want you to miss a single one. So next time, call up your friends or get together with them and join all of us rangers for a session of fighting forest fires, grappling with grizzly bears, or just plain trying to help somebody out. We're sure you'll enjoy the story, and you might just learn something that'll be of real help to you in later life. So, next week, be sure to listen. <laughs> <laughs>